Hey what is up everyone, welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video, my name is Floppy and in today's video we'll be going over how to make a music playlist with a music randomizer and mute button in Roblox Studio. So for starters you want to make sure your explorer and properties are enabled. If your explorer and properties are not enabled, head up to the top bar here, click on view and enable explorer and properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. Once you've enabled Explorer in Properties, you now want to head over to your sound service. Click on the plus button and insert a sound group. Click on the plus button and insert a sound. If you don't see it there in the main area, you have to search it up. But you've got our sound. Now, depending on how many sounds you want, you can go and just duplicate it that many times. For this tutorial, we're going to be using three sounds. Now, I'm going to go and rename these sounds accordingly. I'm going to go and change sound here to sound one, sound two, and then sound three. You're gonna to wanna to do this to all your sounds because you want the script to be able to find the actual sound that you're wanting to play. So go and rename your sounds to whatever you like. I'm just gonna be using sound one, sound two, and sound three. Now obviously if you've got more sounds, you obviously go and do the exact same thing. Sound four, sound five, sound six. Totally up to you. But anyway, we've got our sound there. Now we need to go and find the music that we're gonna be playing in our playlist. So now, depending if you've got your own music already created or you're, um, you got it professionally designed by someone and you've already uploaded it to Roblox, that's excellent. You want to go and make sure that it's uploaded to Roblox and then you can kind of move on to the next stage. But now let's say if you don't have any music and you just want to find some basic, simple music that is total free of charge so that you don't have to pay anything. Roblox offers a amazing selection of different types of audios. From genres to vibes to sound effects, it's, there is so much on here that you can choose from. So obviously now you need to go and choose your audios. For a playlist, usually a playlist that I would recommend, you need to have a, at least a minimum of two or three songs as of right now. Obviously go add more a little later on, but it's totally up to you on how many you add. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be getting about two to three different types of audios, which is actually going to be in my playlist, which I demonstrate to you. I'm just going to choose some random one here from the trending. So I'm, for example, going to choose the error. I uh, will choose the error here for example, so I'm going to right click open link and tab because we're going to need that link here shortly, so go and do that to any audio that you're interested in. Uh, what's this notice one up here? Uh, yeah, that will do the trick, open that one in tab and then we'll also choose pop open. Yeah, that one will do the trick, perfect. Open link and tab. So now that we've got our three audios that we're going to use in the game, what we want to go and do is you want to go over to the link or the search bar on the actual area and copy the big bunch of numbers that is in the link. You want to go and copy that and then you want to take that back to Roblox Studio. So now that you're back inside Roblox Studio, you want to head over to your sound, which you would like this audio to be in or that you would like the song to be in. So for example, sound one is going to be the ID which we just went and copied. I think it was from that error sound effect that we got. So I'm going to go and do control V or right click paste into your sound ID. So click on your sound one and then you want to head over to the properties, find sound ID and then click on the little open space blank thing there next to sound ID and paste in your sound ID, which is actually going to be playing. So if we go and preview it here now, it should be the error. And as you guys could hear, it was the error sound that actually went and played. So we've got the correct ID in here. Now you want to do the exact same thing for however many audios you have. So I've got two more audios to do. So I'm going to go and take those IDs from those two other audios that I uh, opened up in tabs. And then I'm going to go and put them back into our Roblox Studio with sound two and sound three. So there we have it. I've just gone and inserted all of my IDs inside of my sound one, sound two, and sound three. And as you guys can see, each of them have their own different ID. What you now want to go do, you want to click on sound one, and then you want to go down and scroll to the bottom. And where it says um, routing or, or routing, however you want to pronounce that, you want to head over to your sound group, and then you want to click on the open space just here next to your sound group. And then you want to head over here in your sound service and click on your sound group. And then when you click on your sound group, it should look something like that. It should say uh, routing or routing or whatever you want to call it. Sound group, sound group, because now you've got to put your sound group as the sound group there. You want to do the exact same thing with the other sounds here, where it says sound group, click on the space over here, sound group just like that, sound three, and click on sound group again. And it should look something like that, so that it says sound group right there. So once you've gone and adjusted all of your sounds and put in the IDs and changed the, the, the sound group um, thing over there, you don't want to touch anything else. You don't, you don't want to enable the loop, you don't want to enable playing, you don't want to touch anything else because we're going to be all adjusting that in the script. So anyway, what we're going to do, we can leave these all for now and then we're going to head over here to our service group service, click on the plus button and insert a script. So now that you've inserted the script inside of our service group service, you want to go down to the description of this video 
copy and paste the code that's in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio. It's going to be called something like script one, um, uh, normal playlist. And then you want to go and remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code. And as you guys can see, it is a very simple, small script that basically manages and controls our entire playlist for the game. So how this works here, I'm, I don't want to really spend too much time explaining it, it like all the nitty, nitty gritty things. I kind of want to keep it relatively generalized and kind of show you what you need to change and give you a brief summary because I kind of want to keep the videos quite short. But anyway, um, on line one, it goes local sound group. This identifies our sound group. So our sound group is this one right here. If you went and changed it to something else, say, I don't know, uh, SpongeBob, you, went, you go and change this right here to SpongeBob, for example. Then here on line two, it creates a playlist or basically also known as a table. So it goes local playlist equals our table, our table which holds all of our sounds. So as you guys can see, I've already got it set up here for myself. So I've got sound one equals sound group dot sound one. So this is almost like a variable identifying what sound one is. So exactly what we do up here where it goes local sound group equals is the same thing down here. Sound one equals sound group dot sound one. So we go to our sound group, uh, sorry, our sound one equals our sound group, which we mentioned up there, equal uh, dot uh, sound one, which identifies that sound. So that one adds up to that one. Same there, two, two, same one there, three, three, just like that. So it all eventually adds up. But depending if you went and changed your um, sound names to something else, for example, I don't know, cheese and mangoes or whatever, you go and change it right here, just like that. And then you, it is changed accordingly. But now let's say you've got multiple audios and th these three are not enough. All you do is simply copy from sound three here uh, all the way to the end of the comma. And then just after the comma, you want to go and click enter and then you want to go control V and then you paste in another line. Now, obviously you go and change it because you can't have two of the same name variables. And then you want to go here and change that accordingly to whatever your fourth sound is called, for example. But because we don't have four sounds, we're just going to keep it as three how we had it just before. So that is that all sorted and this is basically where our sounds are being managed. This is our playlist and these are going to be playing in order. So now we move on to line nine. It goes local function play sound. This is creating a local function called play sound and then goes sound play and then it goes sound dot ended wait. So basically what is happening here is it plays the sound. It plays the sound here initially, then it waits for the sound to end. So how this all eventually ties in is it ties in here from line 14 to 19. So on line 14, it goes while true do, which is an infinite loop. Then four underscore comma sound and pairs playlist do. Basically what this is doing is it's taking our playlist and then it's playing it here in order. So it's taking our playlist and then it plays the sound, exactly our function that we had there. There's our local func function being called from up there. So you can see play sound and sound. So it plays our sound. So it gets the sound, it plays it, and then it waits for the sound to be finished. And then what it does after the sound has been finished and this has been fully run through, it then waits an additional two seconds, which is almost like a little bit of a, uh, I guess you could, in a way, call it an int intermission, but it's a delay between how long until the next sound is going to be played or the next audio or the next song will be played. And this is kind of just like a the wait time between songs, as I noted here. But that is basically what happens. You play the sound, um, the, the script checks it in here and it plays it in audio, plays the sound and then it waits two seconds and then it loads up to the second sound. So for when we first join into the game, it will play sound one. Then it waits two seconds, then it will play sound two. Then it will wait two seconds, then it will play sound three. Then it will wait two seconds again, and then it will play sound one again. Two, three, one, two, three. And it's a continuous loop. So to go and see how it works, all I'm gonna go do now is I'm gonna click on the X button up here. I'm gonna go to our base plate. So we've got everything enabled. We don't have any other playing on here because it is all controlled via that script. So I'm gonna go click on play, and we're gonna go and test it out for ourselves, and I'll show you how it works. And as you guys can see, we're now in the base plate and these audios will start beginning to play. So as you guys could see, the played audio just played, two seconds. Another audio played, it will wait now two seconds. And another one played, two seconds. Another one played, two seconds time. Another one plays. You see, it's just a continuous loop. So this just goes to show that it does actually work in a continuous loop, even though those audios have already played, it just continues to loop along. But anyway, so now that we saw that system one was working well with just the general playlist, you know, standard playlist where it goes and plays them in order, we're now gonna be moving on to where it randomizes our audios so it plays randomly. So for example, what could happen is we join into the game, it first plays sound three. 
then it only plays sound one, then it plays sound two, and it randomizes the order that they actually play in. So now if you're wanting to insert the randomizer inside of your script, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description. It's going to be called something like script2 um, randomizer script. You want to go and copy that. You want to go bring that back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. As you guys can see, the script is pretty much very similar to what we had previously. I think we've just gone and added about three line, additional three lines of code to the, uh, the actual main script. But anyway, that is our randomizer. So the first thing that we want to kind of cover here is our local sound group, is if you went and changed your sound group name that we have here to anything else, you want to go and change that accordingly. If you named it to Jam, you're going to go and change it to Jam just like that. But because we didn't name ours to Jam, we're going to go and keep it as sound group just like that. So then here on line two, it goes local playlist, exactly how we had previously, your ID, or sorry, your names of your sound which need to be in here. So we're going from the sound group to our sounds. So if you've got more sounds, you obviously go and just add more sounds, how we mentioned in the previous bit of code explanation. Um, sound one, sound two, sound three, sound one, sound two, sound three. Exactly how we had it there previously. And that identifies your sounds, which will be eventually randomized here when the music actually actually plays. Then the exact same thing here as previously, local function, play random sound. This controls our when the sound is actually called. As you guys remember, our sound is actually called, or sorry, our play random sound or our play sound is actually called in the while true do loop in the previous script. So it's the exact same thing, but this is just controlling our um, randomizer. So local index, math.random, one comma hashtag playlist, local sounds equals playlist random index. So that's just grabbing um, just a random sound from our playlist and then that is kind of saying yes that's going to be the next sound just totally randomizing it up so if sounds then so if sounds then sounds play and then sounds dot ended wait and that is exactly what is going to be happening this right here is going to be running when it is called over here so this will run while true do then it waits two seconds and then it chooses does this whole process again where it chooses another random sound and then it plays it again it's just a constant loop of selecting new random sounds so anyway what we're going to go do now let's go and give it a test so we've only got the three sounds so do expect some sounds to probably play over again um, but as we can hear i'm just going to keep quiet here for a second and then you guys can listen so we had that sound there that was um, now we wait two seconds then we have another sound there. We wait two seconds. Another sound again, that was the same sound again. Same sound again after two seconds. And then we've got a different sound this time. So we're now gonna go and work on a mute button for our playlist. Many, many people have requested this from my previous tutorial, which I never included, but I thought, you know what? I think it is time to finally make that video on how I show you guys how to mute your playlist music in Roblox Studio. So now to go and create your mute button, you wanna head over here to start a GUI, click on the plus button and insert a screen GUI. Why is it not showing me a screen GUI? There we go. Insert a screen GUI, click on the plus button, and we now wanna insert either an image button or a text button. It's totally up to you what you do with this. You can also make it, what's quite cool with an image button is what you can do is change the actual image each time it's on and off. So for example, when the, um, the music is on, it will then give you the mute button logo, which will, which you kind of represents, okay, you're now able to turn it off. Then if it's off, it gives you the uh, button to enable it again. It, you can kind of change the images with it, but that's not what we're gonna be doing here today. We're just gonna be using a text button where it says on and off, where you're able to ch turn the, um, the music on and then the music off. So anyway, we've got it here, we've got our text button. Click on the plus button next to our text button and insert a local script. So now that you've inserted a local script inside of your text button, which is gonna be used as the on and off button for your music playlist, or the, I guess you could call it the mute button, you wanna go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that's in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, it's gonna be called script three, it's gonna be called something like playlist mute button. You wanna go and copy that in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. So basically, just to give you a quick run through on what this all actually does, so script.parent.txt, this changes the initial text when the game loads. So before the player has even done anything, the text on this button is gonna be saying um, off as I'm aware, yes, correct. So off, so when the player joins into the game, 
it will say off, which basically what happens initially when you join into the game, the music is going to be playing. So you want to give the player the option to turn off the music and to mute the music. Obviously, you can go and change this accordingly. You can maybe choose it to say mute or unmute, for example. So mute and then unmute instead of on and off, like a light switch. It's up to you, though. It's, I, I, it doesn't really matter, but I'll leave that to you for you to change. Then line two, it goes local playlist active equals false. This is just controlling on what happens, when it happens, and if it can happen later in the script over here. So you don't need to really worry about that. That doesn't really change too much. We've just got it in here to determine on what action it needs to do. Anyway, then here on line three, we identify our music sound groups. Our music sound group is game get service sound service sound group, which is our one right there. So whichever one you're wanting to mute when the player goes and clicks that button, you want to go and put that name accordingly right in there. Then here on line five, it goes script.parent.mouse button one click, connect function, it creates a function. And this basically controls the, um, I guess you could say, the main sound group volume to zero. So because we connected all of our sounds to our sound group there earlier, as you guys remember in the properties over there, we are now able to adjust all of the sounds at once from one location instead of having to go to each of them individually and changing the sound to zero. Then script.parent.text equals on. So this now changes our text here. So when the music is off, that turns to on, saying that the player can turn on the music or, un or for example, you could put unmute in there and then that will turn back on the music exactly how we had it before. Then it just changed the player's active to equal to true. Else, so if none of this is happening and none of this is meeting the requirements, it then means that the audio is already at zero or the volume audio is already at zero. So it then goes and changes the mic, uh, the music sound group volume to 0 0.5, making it its standard volume because the standard volume is 0 0.5, as you guys can see down there. So it just it, it, it removes the audio or the removes the volume, but then it also adds it back. And then after the volume has been added back to 0 0.5, script.parent.text equals off, allowing the player to then be able to see, okay, I want to turn the music off again or, or mute, then you would go and change that accordingly. So you change this to mute if you wanted it to be mute, you change this to unmute, and then you can change this to mute if you're really wanting to, but it's totally up to you. So to go give it a quick test out, what we're going to do, I'm going to go click on the X button here next to our scripts, I'm then going to go click on play, and then we'll go give it a test. And as you guys can see, it's not really the best to do it with the sound effects, uh, but we'll give it a try anyway. Uh, but as you guys can hear, the music is playing or the or sound effects are occurring now in a random order. What I'm gonna go do, I'm gonna go click on off here. But then the moment we go and turn this back on to um, the um, on position so that the audio's, the volume is back at 0 0.5, then we'll be able to hear the audios again. If you guys are a little bit lost and you're needing a little bit of assistance with the system, please feel free to create a ticket in my Discord server and we'd be more than happy to help you out. But anyway guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell so you never miss another one of these amazing videos. And if you did enjoy, please do consider liking the video and subscribing, it would really mean a lot. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.